Where's your coffee? What'd you get? Guess. Iced latte decaf. You missed Half it. the regular amount of syrup. That's it. <laughs> we are sitting here in our trailer. Today we will be working on insulating the floor. And what we have is a two inch expanded foam insulation with reflective material on both sides that we bought on Craigslist. Which I originally thought was a good deal, but I think I might have got ripped off. And what we're doing is we are taking our liquid nails, putting a little bit on one side of our insulation, sticking it up underneath the three quarter inch plywood floor. Uh, we've already started a little bit and it's been incredibly frustrating. Ow. We used a piece of plywood as a straight edge and a utility knife to cut the insulation. This worked okay, but eventually we upgraded to a steak knife, which worked much better. The liquid nails was more to temporarily hold the insulation in place until we could screw in the plywood sheathing. This is the first sheet of insulation we installed and we tried to do it in a single piece which made it very difficult. Eventually we would move to cutting all of the insulation sheets in half which made it much easier to install but we will sacrifice a little of the R value of the insulation by doing this. There we are under the trailer. There's Aaron's legs. She's passing me pieces. Did you measure it all? Because your measuring tape is over here. I did. It was a rough estimate. Oh, hell yeah. That was perfect. <laughs> Look at it. It exploded on me. Oh, babe, I'm sorry. I don't think I can get up. What are we doing? So we've mounted foam insulation underneath the vehicle and we cut those to size but we're not perfect. So we have this great stuff gaps and cracks filler which comes with this little applicator nozzle that you screw on but it only works like this which makes it very hard to use upside down because we need to use it like this. So I don't use this. I take a piece of, uh, I don't even know, quarter inch inner diameter tubing and I press it over the opening here and then what that allows me to do is apply foam above me and keep this can in the right direction for a uh, product to come out of it. Unfortunately Aaron lost all the videos of the gaps and cracks filler being installed but here are some videos of Aaron trimming it off after it dried up as you can see it created quite a mess under the trailer. Now this is the uh, plywood that was on the inside of the trailer that we primed the outside with some exterior primer to make it a little more waterproof. Next we cut the plywood sheets to size using a combination of the circular saw and the table saw. Just like the foam insulation, after we cut these sheets of plywood to size we then cut them in half to make them fit into their locations easier. We used a combination of liquid nails along with some 3 inch screws drilled up through the foam into the subfloor to hold these pieces of plywood into place. We ended up using like 3 different types of screws on the underside of the trailer just because we have a lack of knowledge of what we should have used there, but we're confident it will hold up. I'm so scared. I, oh, I think we need to push harder. Is that a thing? Slow and steady. I think I need to be hard and aggressive. There you go. Now it's going. There's more dust in my eye, or the same dust. After we finished installing all the plywood, we used this DAP Alex Plus acrylic based caulk with silicone uh, to fill any gaps and cracks that were under the trailer, and there were quite a few. This probably wasn't the best choice of caulk for us, but it was cost effective, and we'll see how it holds up to the elements. We did have some gaps due to our poor cutting that were too large to fill with the caulk, so for that, we used some Gorilla weatherproofing tape, um, but we use that very sparingly due to the high cost. So we have completed insulating the undercarriage, but definitely learned some valuable lessons. 
we learned that we have to cut everything as close to size as possible, otherwise we're going to use 10 extra tubes of color. And some gorilla, uh, gorilla tape. Some gorilla tape for some really bad cut jobs we had. <laughs> but at this point it's been a little difficult because a lot of the metal work that the trailer is built on is not square. And all my tools that I purchased I didn't take the time to go through and square up yet either. So that's caused a lot of hassle and headaches. We've been here for about 10 hours today. Can't leave our work site dirty. See you next time. No. It's starting to sweat. These ones are like a quarter full. These long fingers. <laughs>